Welcome back to our first intermission show for the Multiplex, joined by Grizzlies defenseman Reed Lindsay. Uh, Reed, it's nice to meet you over the phone lines. Uh, certainly odd when you're interviewing someone from the other team in the in in this kind of scenario where you can't even see the guy but uh so is uh, the world uh, right now where i don't think it'll ever be acceptable for two people to share a microphone like that but uh hey we're making the most of it how are you how are you as you prepare for this big game here today yeah i'm doing well um yeah i think uh we're prepared for this upcoming game um i think last game we got a good sense of how they play um they're gonna come out hard they're gonna play the body they're going to try to play a physical game but we just got to stick to our game plan and get pucks out i was yeah. really impressed how you went from giving up nine to giving up 22 shots in, in such a quick turnaround like that uh and hey you only gave up uh, 34 shots nine goals but just the attention to detail defensively and you being a defenseman uh there must have been a lot of team pride into, into that sort of goal and that sort of magnitude of a hockey game. You only give up one goal, only 22 shots. There wasn't very many chances. It was very neat and tidy, and uh, maybe that's how the big games have to be played. But just to, your thoughts on, on what you gave up, which wasn't much? For sure, yeah. We went into the game thinking as it's just like a playoff game. Uh, these, two, these two games came down to being first in the league. So we took a lot of pride in just playing the right way, um, especially with the, the D zone part of things, giving up nine goals uh, the game before the Nanaimo. We looked at some tape and uh, touched on a few things. And I think that the stuff that we looked over, we definitely um, did the right stuff uh, in the last game. We're planning on doing the, the same thing, just focus on our defensive games and – not go out there and um when you are as offensively yeah. gifted as a team as you are it's almost that you can play that way because you know the chances and the offense are going to come more often than not just with the the dynamic le level of some of your players plain and simple right mm -hmm, definitely yeah i think uh, a big one for us was just not trying to get out there and try to score every single shift. I think it's just being patient with the game and waiting for our opportunities to come to ourselves. And that comes for just taking care of our D zone. You talked about, uh, the, you said the pride word, and I guess that's the next best uh, place to go to that will certainly be a theme over uh, the, the next couple of interviews for, for me, for sure. Um, there is no trophy. There is no playoffs. Uh, but there is bragging rights and uh, there is pride. And, uh, maybe that's worth a lot more. That uh, sounds cheesy, but maybe that's worth a lot more than a shiny trophy is knowing that, uh, hey, you're you're number one. I mean, that's no one can take that away from you, and anyone mm -hmm. can say, oh, there's no playoffs. Well, hey, yeah, there wasn't, and we went out and we beat you more times than you beat us. I mean, it, th that's got to mean something more in there, I, I guess. Yeah, for sure, definitely. It, it comes down to, like, the pride thing. You want to go out there and you want to do the best you can, and I think um, – Coming in first is would be huge for not only our team but for the organization. So uh, we're looking forward to the next game. Are you looking forward to the end of this, or do you wish it just went on forever? Or is there some middle answer in there uh, where there's a little bit more? Uh, it, it's been a, an incredible grind. Uh, it's been a lot of hockey. Uh, and it's been very fun at all at the same time. And I, I don't know, I just can't believe that Bulldogs have one more game left than the Grizzlies do. But this is it today, which there's got to be a million and one emotions going on in there. And I'm curious uh, how you can try to explain them to us, what you're feeling and you think your teammates are. Yeah, for sure. Um, honestly, I think it would be awesome if this could go on forever. It was kind of, we lucked out uh, getting the chance to play. I mean, uh, it was a long time coming. We've kind of just been waiting it always got postponed postponed and we're lucky to get the, these 20 games so that was awesome for us as a team because we were stuck around together but i think yeah for this coming up i mean it's just awesome that we can uh get these 20 games make it 40 let's keep going let's play till august honestly yeah that'd be <laughs> awesome <laughs> I wish. how do you physically feel uh, have you felt the grind? It has been a lot of games in a, in a short period. Uh, it has been a lot of travel. There's been no home games. 
Uh, you are, as a team, traveling further than anybody else. There's a lot of reasons in there where you couldn't be blamed to be feeling a little bit more worn down, banged up than, than someone else. I know that's mind over matter stuff, but uh, just curious uh, of what it's done to you, the grind and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I mean, like some days you get pretty sore from back-to-back games. Uh, the travel is definitely uh, a lot sometimes, just getting on the bus, having to travel two and a half hours every day for for a game. But, I mean, that's something that we got to overcome. We can't use it as an excuse. we just got to go out there and compete and play our game. Again, with the Grizzlies D-man, Reed Lindsay, what was it uh... – what is it like on a day-to-day basis? And I've, I've heard almost the same, but almost every single time, a little bit of a different answer from everybody. It's an interesting question. Uh, just what it's like playing without fans in the stands and uh, just how different the game is. Uh, I've maintained all along, even since the first exhibition season in September, that as weird as it is to have Nolan in the building and uh, refs and coaches wearing masks uh, uh, it's still as normal as the world has felt since last March when there's uh, two groups of humans engaging in sporting competition. As uh, crazy as that sounds or crazy as it doesn't, it, it, it's normal, but it's weird all at the same time. That's all my words, though. What are yours? Yeah, um, I mean, it's a, little, it's a little weird not having fans. Uh, like, the yeah, Island Cup, so we had, we're allowed like 50, 50 fans, and that still felt pretty weird. But for this pod season, yeah. I mean, just having to... A big one we touched on is just having to create our own energy on the bench and just getting excited, getting loud between whistles and just making sure that we're all excited. Yeah, cheering everybody on. Yeah, I don't think the benches have ever been kicked more or hit with sticks more than they have been in the last month and a bit. That's been uh, something I've certainly noticed. But, hey, whatever you can do, right? I mean, it, I certainly notice it, and I'm sure uh, – it just got to give you a little tiny jolt of adrenaline to, to be either A, on the ice here and your, your teammates uh, giving it like that, or to be on the bench to know that maybe you're having a, a positive impact in, uh, when it's like a library in there. Mm-hmm. For sure, yeah. Uh, let's move back a little. We've talked a lot about the currents, and I'm more curious, just connecting of the dots when I look at uh, your career and your stats that saw you go – uh, from uh, playing in the VI with Campbell River, uh, get AP to the Grizzlies, uh, to beginning your career with the Grizzlies in kind of 2018-19, split through the storm and the Braves a little there. Just uh, you're, you're not from the island, so how did you end up here? And then how did you end up uh, being recruited and uh, deciding to play with Victoria? Yeah, so um started off when I was in Bantam. I was playing in Terrace, which is an hour and a half from my hometown. So that year was the year for the WHL draft. So I moved to get more exposure. And after that, I was looking for places to play academy-wise. That was like the big thing back in the day yep. and still is now. So uh, during that year, we went and as a family, we went and traveled to like OHA, Delta, and PCHA. And I went for a trial for all those teams. And when I went to... Victoria, um, I just instantly fell in love with uh, the city. And so I ended up going to PCHA for the two years and then playing uh, one year in Campbell River. And then after that year at Campbell River, went to the tryout with Victoria, ended up making it. And yeah, the the rest is kind of history. Now I'm here for, been here for the last three years and loved it. Yeah, the rest is history is the, the line I usually say when a guy gets to that point. Uh, uh, looking at your your numbers, your career, uh, approaching 100 games played, uh, you've uh, turned into an old guy. Isn't it incredible how, uh, sorry to call you old, but isn't it incredible how, how <laughs> fast it goes that uh, uh, every kid I interview uh, along the years has always said it goes by so fast and, and everyone tells you it's going to and then you can't believe it, that, but it actually does, like blink of an eye sort of deal. Are you feeling those emotions? Oh, definitely, yeah. It just feels like I just got into the league. It's it's crazy. It just went by so fast, but definitely enjoyed it uh, so much. I had such great teammates over the years, so definitely been been awesome. You said you love Victoria as a city and, and fell in love with it. Uh, give us more on that answer. Uh, why? Uh, warmer, nicer, uh, just uh, the layout? Is there any specific thing, or was it just you felt like uh, home from the beginning and uh, it kind of blossomed from there? Yeah, definitely. It kind of felt like home from the beginning. I mean, it's 
It's a little bit like uh, back home in Prince Rupert. It rains quite a bit, but once you get past the rain, you get a few nice days, so you just got to take advantage of that. I mean, there's so much to do here. You can go golfing all the time, so many places to go hiking, good restaurants, and good views and stuff like that. So, yeah. I'm a, a northern Manitoba guy, so I've uh, always said that uh, the rain especially doesn't bother me because you don't even have to shovel it. It's just it's just gone. <laughs> yeah. It still does get dreary, though. But that's when you have the hockey to keep you busy throughout the winter, I guess, right? Yeah, for sure. How would you describe yourself as a player, as a D-man? Uh, you have, as your experience has grown, uh, your numbers have gotten better and better, and uh, you've uh, added more of the the offensive defensive uh, side to your game. There's been points where I've been calling games this year where you've been there in the top 10 in D scoring and, and flirting with that. That must be something you're, you're proud of and it shows your development and, and where you've come. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. I mean, like early in my career, I kind of just focused on my defensive game and still the now just, that's the most important thing I think as being a D man is being, uh, being responsible in your own zone. And now just, trying to get on the board a little bit, putting up points, trying to get jump in the rush, creating more offense. And yeah. You've been through the Grizzlies through, uh, well, it's kind of funny. I can't even remember who I talked to, uh, Jake Valu, a couple games ago. Uh, Eddie Yen, the, the, the highs and, and the lows and the cycle of the, the circle of life of, of junior hockey where, uh, you, I mean, you, you have a teammate that uh, a couple nights ago went and picked up an apple in the NHL. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it was Pretty cool to see uh, him. Uh, we watched the game. It was pretty cool to see him out there. When it comes to you, let's do the player profile. We kind of know your hometown already, so that one's spoiled. Uh, I need your full name and your age, though. Uh, yeah, Reed Lindsay, uh, age 20. Reed, do you have a middle name? Uh, Gary. Nine out of hey. ten guys, make me ask twice. Don't feel bad. You're just <laughs> another number. Uh, that's funny, yeah. Have you? Um, the middle name is Gary, yeah. My have dad's you, name. Okay. Have you always been a D man throughout minor hockey? Has hockey always been uh, the sport that you have focused on? Uh, yeah, no, I played uh, a bunch of sports growing up. Uh, I used to swim, used to play soccer, played a little bit of baseball uh, a couple summers. But as you get older, you kind of got to focus on one sport. Is each sport so time consuming if you want to get good at it and move to the next level? So, yep. kind of chose hockey, fell in love with it. And yeah, I used to be a forward back in the day in minor hockey, my early career. Oh, I and love then, these stories. Uh, and, yeah. and just lighten it up or, or not at all. And that's why you're a D man? Or was it something crazy like uh, the Jake Valou story where someone's hurt and hey, I'll play? And oh, actually, you're kind of good. How did, how did it all happen where uh, you became a D man again? Uh, yeah, it was actually my dad who thought I should be defense. My mom wasn't too happy about that. She kind of liked me up front scoring goals when I was a kid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my dad saw my skating, and he's like, yeah, you know, I think, I think you should play back in the back end and see how you like it. And then once I played defense for a year, I just stuck with it. What? Uh, and th there wasn't any uh, crazy stuff where you threw the pads on and played net? No, no. <laughs> it was uh, My brother was that. Yeah, he <laughs> he, played, you, you uh, saw enough to know that that wasn't for you. <laughs> yeah, he, he's my older brother, so he was goalie first, and I saw that. And I was like, I don't like getting <laughs> puck shot at me. Uh, when it comes to uh, the future and uh, advancing in this game, is that it, somewhere where you are getting interest, where you're actively pursuing it, where uh, there's something signed and dealed and done, and I don't know. I mean, you, you're the guy that playing this pod season must have meant so much for because uh, uh, you hadn't received a commitment to, you needed the exposure to, to continue playing and well here we are so I'm curious uh, what it's meant for you to, to have that further opportunity and uh, if you have yet if you're trying or or your thoughts on all of it yeah for sure it was definitely it's definitely huge to get these 20 games to get the exposure um it's just been waiting so long so it's been it's been nice but yeah nothing nothing set in stone it's just kind of got a couple options here that i'm going over and working out so hopefully soon what was it like to go through the emotions of last march to this september to then having the island cup to then having the season delayed and you had already mentioned that every player has delayed 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 over and over and over uh just take us through those emotions before you get to the 
We might actually play. Oh, no, it's delayed again. And all of a sudden, wow, we're going to get to play hockey. I know there's a lot of questions in there, but uh, uh, try to just take us through the emotions uh, arc uh, of it all. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the biggest one was frustration. We felt every time it kind of got postponed, it was just getting frustrated. Like, uh, we want to play, we want to play, and then we get postponed. So, I mean, the big thing just that helped with it is as our team, we kind of stuck together in Victoria for the whole time. So that helped just being around everybody and practicing and competing and battling with each other in practice. Definitely made it a little easier. But, yeah, just – it was just kind of frustrating back in the day when it kept getting postponed. And yeah. What was it like when it was no longer postponed? And was it almost hard to even believe that, no, nope, there's actually going to be a season, uh, as weird as it is, you, we're going to get to play? Uh, that must have been, uh, well, indescribably exciting. Yeah, no, it was awesome. The excitement in the room when we got the news, it was it was crazy. Just everybody was jumping up, hugging each other, just, full of excitement has it been what you've uh, expected uh somewhat in between nothing like it or uh, exactly what you dreamed exactly what i dreamed yeah it was just it was just so so cool to uh hear the news and we finally got a chance to to play what's uh your grizzlies got talent has there been one posted yet first i guess because i don't want to spoil it if not <laughs> no it hasn't been posted yet oh okay yeah. well, well no, it's coming well, we'll save it as a cliffhanger. And what's your confidence level on your talent versus your teammates then? Are we um, going to be blown away? Is yours that unique? Uh, is it uh, you saw everyone else says, oh, man, I'm all the same? Or uh, uh, are you so close to the vest you won't even give us that? No, you won't be blown away with it. Uh, it's, it's all right. It's nothing special. I mean, there's a couple guys out there that had some pretty good ones. Which but ones? Think, you know, which ones do you uh, begrudgingly tip your cap to? Uh, Justin Easter's, I like that one. He was pretty good juggling. Um, funny one, I like the the Henri Streifels holding his breath. I thought that was pretty cool. That pretty was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, and then a couple of guys doing golf tricks with a golf club again. Yeah, I understand how they do that. I try to do it, and the ball just flies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny stuff. Uh, what's an unexpected positive? Uh, a silver lining that you have somehow come out of this whole coronavirus worldwide pandemic shutdown startup uh, pod season. Uh, I, I know we've lost so much and I, I just try to always find some sort of positive where uh, there, there's just something that, Hey, this is a good thing. And this wouldn't have happened if this didn't happen. Uh, what comes to mind for you? Yeah. Um, I think just picking up new hobbies, uh, I think a big one for me during the the whole quarantine and staying in, you get to stay at home a little bit more. So you pick up different things. I ended up picking up chess, started to read a little bit more. That's the second time I've heard the, the, the chess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a bunch of like chess games and stuff like that with the billets. Uh, yeah, that was good. And then just being able to just go out and kind of explore uh, Victoria, going for hikes and stuff like that, get a chance to just kind of get out of the house and, enjoy the nature side of things outstanding stuff uh when it comes to people that uh, have uh, gotten you where you're at today or uh, in the future uh, uh will help you along uh this is your opportunity now to, to say hello and a shout out to, to anybody that to help your career your life uh that sort of stuff uh, shout outs uh, do it now yeah i uh, just shout out both my parents um they've definitely helped me so much along the way and my grandparents as well uh they're both a big part of me growing up and helping me to get to where I am now. Give me 30 seconds on why uh, we should visit Prince Rupert, if that's uh, your hometown and you've uh, had some, some pride, <laughs> obvious about it. Uh, give us the, the, the tourism brochure. Um, yeah, I would say if you're thinking of coming to Prince Rupert, come with a good week where there's no rain <laughs> um, and sun. You'll enjoy it a lot more. Um, there's great fishing, a couple great places to hike around. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot to do, but if you're kind of like the outdoor stuff and fishing, then they like it. Then the opportunities are limitless, right? Yeah, definitely. Outstanding stuff. Uh, Reed, really appreciate your time. Thanks for this. Best of luck today and in the future. Thank you. Thank you.